Hi friends, before driving to Los Angeles this morning, I checked my email and there were some photos from Ruben in Texas who had visited Selena's gravesite. So he sent me a couple of uh, selfies. So I thought since I was gonna be down here in LA, I would stop by and see one of her murals. She has quite a few murals here in the Los Angeles area, but unfortunately there's a man sitting right in front of her face here. This is on the corner of Echo Park and Sunset Boulevard. And I don't know if it was just luck or fate or timing or chance, but Ruben Lil's photos arrived on the very day I started working on this vlog about famous young people who tragically died in their 20s. So I'd like to give a shout out and a big thank you to Ruben Leal for sending me these selfies at singer Selena's gravesite and nearby memorial statue. For those of you who might not be familiar with Selena Quintanilla, she was born April 16, 1971 and died March 31, 1995 at the young age of 23 in Corpus Christi, Texas. She was shot and killed by her business manager, Yolanda Saldivar, at the Days Inn Hotel in Corpus Christi, Texas. She has one of the most popular final resting places on the planet, and thousands of fans visit her gravesite each year. She's buried at Seaside Memorial Park in Corpus Christi, Texas. One of my all-time favorite love songs is Selena's Dreaming of You. So how about you? Do you have a favorite Selena song? And one of my favorite stand-up comedians and actors back in the 1970s was Freddie Prinze. He was also the star of the NBC TV sitcom Chico and the Man that aired from 1974 until his death in 1977. Prinze was born June 22, 1954 and died January 29, 1977 at the young age of 22 in Los Angeles. He died from a self-inflicted gunshot to the head, and in 1977, his death was ruled a suicide. But later in 1983, a civil case jury ruled that the death was medication-induced and accidental. He's laid to rest in the Courts of Remembrance at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in the Hollywood Hills. Fans will also remember that he's the father of actor Freddie Prinze Jr. Another famous person who died from a self-inflicted gunshot to the head was model and actor John Eric Hexum. Hexum was born November 5, 1957 and died October 18, 1984 at the age of 26 in Los Angeles. While on the set of his CBS TV series Cover Up, he tragically and accidentally shot himself in the head with a gun that was supposed to shoot blanks. Hexum appeared on half a dozen TV shows during his short career and is probably best remembered for his role on the TV series Voyagers from 1982 to 1983. He was cremated and his ashes were scattered, but his fan club has placed the Cenotaph Memorial plaque at the Valhalla Cemetery in North Hollywood, just inside the back gates. And in another one of those weird coincidences that I'm always sharing with you, as I'm editing this video, I received an email from Seattle Judy with this photo of her visiting the grave sites of Bruce Lee and Brandon Lee. Martial artist and actor Bruce Lee died at the young age of 32. Sadly, his son, Brandon Lee, who was also a martial artist and actor, died at the age of 28. His headstone is just to the right of his father's headstone and right behind Judy's head. Like John Eric Hexum, Lee also died on the set from a malfunctioning prop gun. He was filming the movie the Crow. Brandon Lee was born February 1, 1965 and died March 31, 1993 at the age of 28 in Wilmington, North Carolina. He's buried right next to his father at Lakeview Cemetery in Seattle, Washington. 
thanks so much, Seattle Judy, for sending this photo at the perfect time. Another young, famous person who died by gunshot was Canadian model and actress Dorothy Stratton. Stratton was born February 28, 1960, and died August 14, 1980, at the age of 20 in Los Angeles. In a murder-suicide, she was shot by her estranged husband and manager, Paul Snyder, who then took his own life. He was 29 at the time and is buried at Shahrazadik Cemetery in New Westminster, British Columbia. Stratton was the Playboy Playmate of the Month in August 1979 and the Playboy Playmate of the Year in 1980. She also appeared in a number of movies, and since her death, a number of movies have been made about her life. Stratton is laid to rest here at the Westwood Village Memorial Park, and from her gravesite, if you look straight ahead, you can just about see the crypts of Hugh Hefner and Marilyn Monroe. It's also interesting to note that actress Jamie Lee Curtis played Stratton in the movie Death of a Centerfold, and Curtis's mother, Janet Lee, is also buried here in the cemetery, not far from Stratton's grave. I find more interesting connections and coincidences in this cemetery than almost any other cemetery that I've ever been to. In the same cemetery and in the same center lawn section is the final resting place of actress Dominique Dunn. Dunn was the daughter of writer and actor Dominic Dunn and the sister of actor Griffin Dunn. She was born on November 23, 1959 and died November 4, 1982 at the age of 22. Tragically, she was strangled to death by her ex-boyfriend John Thomas Sweeney in the driveway of her West Hollywood home. Dunn appeared in more than a dozen movies and TV shows, but she's probably best remembered for her role as Dana Freeling in the 1982 horror film Poltergeist. Actor Anton Yelchin appeared in more than a dozen TV shows and nearly 50 movies during his short career. Yelchin was born in Russia on March 11, 1989 and died June 19, 2016 at the age of 27 at his home in Studio City, California. He tragically died in a freak accident involving his Jeep Grand Cherokee in the driveway of his home. The official cause of death was listed as blunt traumatic asphyxia. Shortly after his death, I visited his gravesite here at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. And at the time, it was a simple gravestone in a beautiful location overlooking the lake and the Hollywood sign. In October of 2017, it was replaced by this beautiful bronze statue of Yelchin. Yelchin appeared in many popular and memorable films, but he's probably best remembered for his role as Pavel Chekhov in the three Star Trek films he appeared in. Who remembers the huge 1950s hit song, Earth Angel? If you're a baby boomer like me, you had to have heard it. And singer-songwriter Jesse Belvin was one of the co-writers of that song. And he's buried right here, just inside the front gates of Evergreen Cemetery in East Los Angeles, just a little bit east of downtown LA. You can kind of see it off in the distance there. You come in the front gate, you come in the front gate, you make a right, you swing around here, just a very short distance, and on the left in section G is where you'll find the final resting place of Jesse Belvin. Belvin was born December 15, 1932, and died February 6, 1960, at the age of 27 in Hope, Arkansas. He had just completed a concert in Little Rock, Arkansas with Sam Cooke. Jesse and his wife and manager, Joanne, were both tragically killed in a head-on auto accident. In addition to Earth Angel, Belvin had other hit songs, including the very popular Good Night, My Love, which was one of his biggest hits. As you can see, Joanne is also buried here with Jesse, and she was only 24 years old when she died. And sadly, just two months later, another rock and roll superstar of the 1950s was also killed in an auto accident. 
One of the most influential rock musicians of all time, Eddie Cochran, was born October 3rd, 1938, and died April 17, 1960, at the age of 21, in Bath, England. While he was on tour in England, Cochran was killed when riding in a taxi that lost control and crashed into a lamppost. The other passengers, Cochran's girlfriend Sharon Sheely, singer Jean Vincent, and the taxi driver, all survived the accident. Cochran was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1987 and is credited with influencing the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, Jimi Hendrix, and nearly every other rock and roll musician or group that followed him. Cochran is buried at Forest Lawn in Cypress, California, just inside the front gates in the section to the left. And as you can see, his girlfriend Sharon is now buried near him. In 1959, just a year before Cochran's death, the music world lost three other young rock and roll legends. And I'd like to give a big shout out and a thank you to Connie L. Labridi for sending these photos that she took of two of their memorials. She took the first photo outside of the Serve Ballroom in Clear Lake, Iowa, where they played their final concert. She took the second photo just outside of Clear Lake, Iowa, of the crash site memorial. Rock and roll pioneer Buddy Holly was born September 7, 1936 and died February 3, 1959 at the age of 22 in a plane crash near Clear Lake, Iowa. The crash also took the life of fellow musicians Richie Valens, who was only 17 years old, and J.P. Richardson Jr., who was known as the Big Bopper. He was only 28 years old. The three had just completed a show and were headed to the next destination on their tour when their plane went down. The accident shocked the world and was referred to as the day the music died. And in 1971, singer Don McLean wrote a hit song about that tragic day called American Pie. Rolling Stone magazine named Holly one of the 100 greatest music artists of all time. And like Cochran, he's considered to be one of rock and roll's most influential artists of all time. Holly is buried at the City of Lubbock Cemetery in Lubbock, Texas, and the Big Bopper is buried at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Beaumont, Texas. I visited the gravesite of Richie Valens here in California last year, and I'll put the link to that vlog down below this video. I'd also like to give a shout out to Carrie Paulson, who suggested that I visit the gravesite of Eddie Cochran, and Mark Dana, who suggested that I visit the final resting place of Jimi Hendrix, who's definitely on my bucket list, and to Nisa, who suggested that I visit the gravesites of the 27 Club, which are the many famous young people who died at the age of 27. So thank you, Carrie and Mark and Nisa and the many other viewers and subscribers who left comments suggesting that I visit the final resting places of the many famous people who died way before their time. Oh, and before I forget, some of you over the past year have asked me if I had t-shirts or other gifts available. I thought, well, if I get to 10,000 subscribers, then I'll go ahead and add some t-shirts, some graveyard guy and graveyard girl t-shirts and gifts for those of you who are interested. So I've got a few on my shop, and I'll, I'll put the link down below in case you'd like to visit and see what's available. Sadly, there are way too many famous people who died in their 20s to include them all here in this video. But I'll continue to visit their graves to include in part two. But I'd like to invite all of you to send me cemetery selfies. If you've visited famous people who died in their 20s, at their grave sites and you have pictures with them and you'd like to share, please email them to me. I'll put my email address down below where you can send your cemetery selfies with your permission to use them. Then I'd be happy to do that in uh, future vlogs.